In this session, we are going to discuss about the database first approach in uh, entity framework core. So in MEC core, how to handle database first approach. Already in previous session, we discussed about the code first approach. Now in database first approach, a simple technique, if you have an existing database, then you can generate all domain specific classes according to the database and tables. So if your MEC core application have to communicate with database, usually you need to write all the domain specific data logic. Now what entity framework core helps you is, it will generate database related classes which are required to communicate with the database. So you don't need to design any model classes. Whatever the classes required to communicate with database, all those classes are generated by entity framework. Let's see how it can happen. So we will create a new project, ASP.NET Core Web Application, and uh, I will name it as Entity DB first. In this, we will select an uh, web application with MVC and uh, let's create an MVC core application. In this MVC core application, we need to install the library for communicating with the uh, entity uh, databases. We need to right click and go to NuGet packages. As we already learnt, we need two packages. One is Microsoft Entity Framework SQL Server. Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server and uh, the three version and install. So we are installing Entity Framework Core for communicating with SQL Server. That is one library. We need to install this library. And uh, another library we need is the Entity Framework Core Tools, which is responsible for connecting with the uh, database through commands, means configuring, updating the database through commands. So once Entity Framework Core SQL Server package is installed. I am selecting uh, Entity Framework related all dependencies. Once these dependencies are ready, I will install another Entity Framework Core tools. So these tools will give me access to the commands that I need. So these tools also 3.0 and install. So these tools will give me access to the commands which are used for uh, updating with the database. So what we are going to do here is uh, once uh, the packages are ready, in my models, you can see initially there is some error view model. Some models are empty. So we are going to check the database. We just created a database in earlier session that is uh, MVC core DB. This uh, core DB is having tables that is categories and products. Now we have an existing database in tables. To communicate with these existing database in tables, we need some domain classes, business specific logic. What entity framework can do? It can generate all the logic that you need to communicate with these tables. Let's see how the logic is generated. Very simple, you need to just go to tools in that NuGet package manager, in that package manager console. In the package manager console, we need to execute a command. The command is scaffold, scaffold db context in scaffold db context we need to define the connection string 
So, let us add a verbatim character and define the connection string. You can use a single code for the connection string. So, connection string is data source, data source is uh, local and uh, initial catalog, initial catalog is core DB, the database and uh, user ID password. So, one, two, three. In the package manager, we defined uh, scaffold db context. Scaffolding is a technique that allows to generate all the classes that are required specific requirements to communicate with any database. So, scaffold db context is going to generate all the classes according to the context defined. So, we just need to specify the connection string which already we done the connection string is defined and we need to configure the provider name. The provider name is Microsoft, Microsoft dot entity framework, framework uh, core, entity framework uh, core dot uh, SQL server that is the provider and where these files need to be generated, domain classes need to be generated, you have to define that by using hyphen output dir. Output dir indicates into which folder these files need to be generated. It should be generated into folder models. So, finally, the command scaffold db context it will connect with the database defined in specific location using this provider and uh, it will generate all the classes that are required to communicate with the database and store them in models. Let us execute this command. In order to run this command, you need the SQL Server tools to be installed. Already we installed the Entity Framework SQL Server tools through that we can access. Now you can see the scaffold finish. Let us observe our project and see here. In the models, you can observe there is TBL categories which is mapping to the categories table with category ID and category name and we have TBL products which is mapping to the product ID and category ID which is a foreign key and uh, we have a context, context is using db context and it is using the core db context options and it is using the connection string with the two db sets, one is TBL categories, another one TBL products. So, whatever the logic that you need to communicate with the database, all the logic is generated by running a simple command scaffold db context. So, this is database first approach. So, you have database, then entity framework will generate all the classes that are required to communicate with the database. In our next session, we are going to discuss how to handle the CRUD operations using entity framework core. Thank you.